Moses did signs in the sight of the people. And there are signs that believers, uh, these signs will accompany believers and they will drive out demonic, unclean spirits. They will speak in languages they didn't know. They will heal the sick. There's a word that occurs two times. Epsilon, Kappa, Sigma, Toph, Alpha, Sigma, Yoda, Sigma, final Sigma. And this word is ecstasis. ecstasis. It means it's talking about a trance. Mm. Uh, this happened on the roof of Simon the Tanner. Yes. It happened in Jerusalem. It happened with Kepha, and it happened with um, uh, Paul. And uh, this has been used in New York City. Mm. And why? Why? Because the Jew requires a sign. And I want to talk just for a second about Moses. Because Moses knew or eventually he came to know that God had set him aside. Mm. Uh, he was called to get his people out of bondage. And there's a lot of bondage. There's bondage to the Kabbalah, bondage to white magic, bondage to false teaching, false Mashiachs, bondage to the improper teaching about the Torah. This man, Moses, he was in trouble from his birth, mm -hmm. but his sister, Miriam, she was an Alma, a young unmarried virgin. Uh, I believe it's Exodus 2.8. She was watching when the princess from Pharaoh's house picked up the, the little ark basket and found the baby crying. And she said, would you like for me to get a nursing mother for the baby? Mm. And so Moses' own mother nursed this baby until he was weaned and raised in the palace of Pharaoh. And he had a, an education, and it was a thorough education that it helped that helped him to write the Torah. And I don't know what education you've had, but it's been given to you for a reason. Whatever training you've received, God can marshal it into His service. Yes, and. Uh, this is our desire. And M Moses, although he was in trouble and had to go to Midian to get his wife and then return to Egypt after the people who were going to get him were dead, he never stopped totally meditating on the call of his life. And his call came when the Malik Hashem appeared to him, Exodus 3, verse 2, in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And this was a theophany of the word of God, who would later take on flesh, who was dealing with this man to be a deliverer because God was going to lead these Hebrew slaves redeemed by the blood of a lamb to a land flowing with milk and honey presently occupied by the Canaanite, Hittite, Amorite, 
Perizzite, Hivite, and Jebusite peoples, but had been promised to Abraham. And all of these things that Moses was going to do were already laid out in prophecies that he was going to write down. And when he gets to the story of Abraham, he's going to uh, put all of this in the Torah. But even before that, the seed of the woman would crush the head of the seed of the serpent. And come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. This is what God said to him. And Moses said, you know, he, he felt he, they wouldn't accept him. And if they asked, what was the name of this God? What should he say? And uh, all of this uh, objection was brushed aside. Uh, any pretext was brushed aside by naming Aaron as the spokesperson. And so Moses appeals to Jethro, his father-in-law, he takes his wife and two sons, and in the wilderness going toward Egypt, they run into Aaron, who has also been apprised of God's plan and God's command. And they meet at the mountain of God, which is Sinai, and these two brothers talk over this message that they have received regarding their enslaved brethren. And they turn their faces toward Egypt and the God-given task, which is theirs. And God has told Moses that all of this is going to be accomplished with signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. This is why we are Pentecostal. This is why when Beth Shalom was attempted to be shut down by terrorists, by terrorists, the Lord terrorized the terrorists and he used signs and wonders to thwart their attempt and kept the doors open. And he did this so that we might finish the work that we are doing, which the devil was trying to bring to a halt even before it got really off the ground. But now it is off the ground. Now you can go to yiddishbible.net and there it is. The Four Spiritual Laws in Yiddish, the Yeshua yeah. film in Yiddish, the Brit Hadashah in Yiddish, 365 Bible prophecies about the Messiah and all of these other Yiddish things. You really need to write this down. Yiddishbible.net. And it's in English and it's also in Yiddish. Also the New Creations app, newcreations.app which is also an Android app that you can get at, at Google Play. And these, mm. these things were put together by people that God brought in from Australia, from New Zealand, from California, from England, from uh, ne the Netherlands, from four or five continents, people that didn't know me, people that God whistled and he brought them in. And uh, when the devil tried to stop all of this stuff, even before it started back in 1992, actually 1994, the Lord used signs and wonders to stop the devil because we are fighting 
principalities and powers. We're not fighting flesh and blood. We're dealing with Satan's kingdom and power encounters between God and the devil. And uh, when Rav Shaul swiveled around and the false prophet was struck with blindness, this was not something that a man could do. This was a sign, a wonder, a miracle, a power encounter mm. of Almighty God. Because the gospel was going to go forth on that island and nobody was going to stop it. And that's what God has decided. Nobody is going to stop what he's going to do. But what we have to do is go back to Exodus chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and make that Moses commitment that we are going to say, let my people go. Let them hear the word of God. Let them have a Yiddish Brit Hadashah. Let them go to AFII.org and download the Orthodox Jewish Bible as it's been formatted for the United Bible Society. Let them go to the different platforms where it's available, Bible Hub, Bible Gateway, Bible Study Tools, and all these other platforms. Let them have the Word of God. We are here only for a short time. But while we're here, we've been given a divine commission. Moses didn't even get started till he was uh, an older man. Also Abraham. Also many others. My teacher, my, my mentor, Dr. Donald McGavern. All these people, their real work came later. Lord, I want to pray right now that all the people working with us will be blessed with divine health and longevity and strength mm. to rise up and do the work and endure hardship, live a sacrificial lifestyle, endure hardship and do the work of a Mavaser and preach the good news to the Jews first and fulfill the ministry and the calling and the commission that God has given them. And, oh, God, we are not going to neglect the Muslims mm. because God does. they are over one out of four people in the world. Yes. And they must be reached. And, oh, God, we yeah. want to pray right now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach that anyone watching or listening to this YouTube video will taste and see that the Lord is good and open the scriptures and ask God to help them understand what they're reading and come to a saving knowledge mm. of the Holy One of Israel so that his plan for their life could be fulfilled. Because God expects more from us than just eating and drinking and getting old and dying. He has a plan. And I want to pray right now for everyone that they would taste and see yes. that the Lord is good. Amen.